What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rule Hard Garage. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Dick. And this is Muggsy. And today we are painting the wheels on our CB700 SC. The tour bus. The tour bus. <laughs> If you haven't seen our first build episode, you can check that out right here. We've painted a lot of wheels before using this exact same method and it works extremely well. Uh, it's not quite as good as powder coat, but it's way, way cheaper. You can do it right in your garage. The turnaround time is pretty good and it's definitely a quick, dirty alternative to getting powder coat. Powder Powder coat. Get to powder coat and comparable to powder coat. It's not quite as good, but it works extremely well. And it's cheap. Uh, and it's way cheaper. We're gonna show you how to do that today. But before we get into that, we're gonna go over our project, kind of where we're at with it, uh, the direction we're gonna go with it, the things we're gonna do, and, and maybe get a little help from you guys on uh, some parts that we need from the front end. Let's go over the whiteboard. Uh, it, over on the extras list is actually painting the wheels, but it's something I wanted to do last year anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it done. We're gonna be doing the brakes, and we gotta do the forks, so we're gonna kind of have things apart anyways. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the wheels painted right now. I don't know if anybody has ever used aftermarket springs uh, in their forks on their CB700 or just in general, but there's actually two different brands. There's Racetech and there's Progressive. The Progressive ones are a little bit cheaper, so I was thinking of going with the Racetech, but if you've ever used those before, comment below and let me know how they worked out and if they improved the ride or they improved your old saggy springs. We actually added a couple things to the list. Uh, Lindsay went ahead and added the fork gators which we'll use when we go ahead and put everything back together and also a dyno jet kit because like I said, I modified the airbox last year. Uh, so it definitely needs a bump up on the jets just to kind of help it out and make it run a little bit better. So without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump into it and get these wheels painted. Get the bike out, get the wheels off and- uh, Clean the living shit out of them. Clean the living shit out of them. This is why I didn't get my nails filled this morning. You gotta get dirty. thing that I didn't do last year and I didn't even think about it didn't consider it um, but now that I'm looking at it in front of me I really should just change the wheel bearings in this um, especially with how many miles that I plan on putting it next on it next year so one of the things that is undesirable to a lot of people about this bike is the shaft drive um, shaft drive kind of creates a lot of undesirable things as far as handling goes Honda actually did pretty good on this bike and did a lot of things to keep it from uh, having the effects that a shaft driver would normally have. So it's really not too bad. On this application, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's a really smooth uh, ride. It makes doing wheelies kind of weird, but other than that, it's actually pretty nice. So another thing that is kind of undesirable and strange about this bike is the fact that it makes, you know, 86 horsepower and it has a drum brake on the back. Um, it works. But obviously, drum brake is not the best solution for it. We actually put new uh, shoes on last year. This is the first time I'm looking at them. And it actually looks pretty good. Doesn't look too bad at all. He's got about 4,000 miles on him. As unbelievable as it seems, uh, Dawn dish soap is actually, you know, one of the best methods I've had for cleaning stuff up that's greasy, like frames and wheels and crap like that. So a little bit of soapy warm water, clean the wheel up, and uh, that's step one for prepping for, for primer. <laughs>
actually starting to get kind of late last night. We've been getting all kinds of freaking snow, so uh, I went ahead and called it a night so I can get the snow taken care of. Uh, but we're back out here the next day. We got some fresh coffee. Uh, I'm actually going to scuff these wheels. It'd be a good idea to scuff them uh, just to give a little bit extra of a bonding surface for the primer to stick to when we go ahead and prime them. So one thing, uh, a tip about doing your wheels this way, you know, definitely not any easier than uh, powder coating. It's it's a lot of work, and uh, if you want it to turn out nice, you have to put a lot of work into it. And that's just kind of the trade-off of doing things on your own and uh, saving a little bit of money. I could have easily went and spent $70 a wheel, and a week later I would have had perfectly powder coated parts. Um, but I'm showing you guys how to do this yourself and save money. You know, we're doing this for less than 30 bucks for everything and we're gonna end up with something really nice. But I've spent about an hour scuffing up this wheel and Lindsay spent about an hour cleaning them last night. So you're investing a lot of time and it's a lot of elbow grease to get in there and uh, spend the time to get in all these nooks and crannies and crevices and that's really what's going to determine how this project turns out. If uh, you skimp on the prepping, uh, you're just not going to get the result that you're expecting to get and you're going to be disappointed in the end. So unless you're prepared to invest time and the labor uh, and love what you do with this, it's just not going to turn out how you want. You're probably better off just spending the money and getting them powder coated. <laughs> This is one of those steps that having attention to the detail and taking the time is definitely just going to pay off. This is kind of behind everything and you're not really going to see it. Uh, it's not going to be super obvious, but I'm a little bit anal about things like that. So I like things to be a little bit nicer. I've got this taped up. I'm going to go through real carefully with this brand new sharp razor blade and slice this off. As you can see here, I've got these cards slipped inside of the rim to protect this tire from getting overspray on the sidewall because this is pretty much a brand new tire. It's only got about uh, 800 miles or so on it. Um, but as you see, they're not falling out. And the reason is, is because I let the air out and then squeeze the tire to slip these in back behind it. Um, and this is the best way to do this. If you're not doing it this way, then you're probably getting really frustrated. Um, I know I tried it before without doing the uh, trick to let the air out and it worked terribly, obviously. So uh, let the air out, slip the cards in, that way you don't have to worry about it. This tire is absolute garbage, it's trash. We're not worried about getting paint on this one because we're gonna replace it anyways. So this one we're gonna paint and uh, trash the tire and be done. Okay, we've got everything taped off and prepped. It took way too fucking long to get everything prepped because I'm being anal about everything. We're just gonna get the stuff primed, so we're gonna jump into that right now. Kind of a blower motor set up here so I can get the fumes out because you don't wanna be breathing all this crap. You probably wanna shut your furnace off if you've got a furnace uh, in your garage because it's going to be sucking in a bunch of uh, nasty fumes and and heating them up and that's just not good for you or the furnace. So go ahead, shut that off. Then you can jump in to painting the stuff which Lindsay's gonna do because Lindsay is much painter. more attention to detail and she's an awesome wife. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, the wheels are primed and we are calling it quits for this week. Uh, we spent a lot of time getting these prepped so they turn out good. No need to rush through it. We want them to turn out nice so we're not worried about finishing them this week. We're gonna let these dry, uh, get them sanded, get them painted. We'll cover all that in next week's video. We have a crazy snowstorm coming and uh, we need to get prepared for that. So if you like these videos, do not forget to subscribe hit the bell, tune in next week. We're gonna be finishing up these wheels. Check us out on Instagram at rule underscore hard. If you just wanna see motorcycle stuff, if you wanna see kind of behind the scenes of everything else that's going on around here, you can check out Lindsay and Dick. Uh, on Facebook, we are Rule Hard Media. Check us out, get all of the updates. Later.